Hey everyone, in this video, I'll walk you through Next.js very fast. If you want more in-depth videos about Next.js, check out the rest of my YouTube channel. But this one is meant as a very fast overview of Next.js. So let's say we want to build a Next.js website, a blog website. So I open up my code editor here. I opened a folder here, but you can see it's currently still empty. Where do we start? Well, I can start here by opening up my terminal. And here we can write npx create next app. And we want to use the latest version and if you just write it like this it's going to create a new folder in here but i don't want that i just wanted to put all the files directly in here so i'm going to put a period here if i press enter here it's going to ask us some questions i typically just go with all the default options here so i'm just going to press enter all right so after a few seconds that is finished and now i have a very standard next.js sort of a boilerplate so let me quickly give you a walkthrough here so at the top we have node modules then we have public this is basically your static assets like images or videos perhaps and then we have the source folder. So this is typically where you will spend most of your time as a developer. This is where you have the actual source code of your app. And then we have typically a bunch of configuration files here for the tools that we use in our project. So for example, it's a TypeScript project. So there are some settings for that. So we're using the Next.js app router, not the pages router. And in here we have some special files. So we have a page file directly in the root of this app folder here, which means this component here is going to be used for the home page. I'm going to say npm run dev. You can see it's using something called turbo pack and it speeds up uh, local development a lot actually. And here we go. This is our Next.js application. I typically start off by actually removing all of this because we want to have our own home page. Now there is also some default styling here. So in globals.css, but I like to remove this as well and also start from a clean slate. However, we do want to use Tailwind CSS. So I will still leave this then there is a fav icon this this will be used as the fav icon and then we have a layout file here as well this is the root layout here we can specify for example the title this is what you will see in the tab here as well so if i change it to my blog we see my blog we can have a description here this may show up in google search results here there is something related to the font and here we see the actual component so this looks a bit strange with uh, children here but basically our pages are going to be in here so all pages will have the html and body surrounding it so let me actually change the home page here to something like this now we have this and we want to have other pages as well so how do we do that well we create folder and then we need to use page.tsx again. So this is like a special file name that we need to use. Here we can just export another React component. I can call it posts page or just page. I can type in slash posts and we see this. So let's actually create a header here, but I want to have the same header on each page. So that we want to add it to the layout. We want to link to other pages that we have. So there is a link component from Next.js. I can go to slash posts and I can go back again. Let's also add a footer here. I will do it in the layout as well because I want it to be the same footer for all pages. So now if I go back here, you can see we have a footer. If I now switch pages, you can see it's only the content in the middle that changes, but the content at the top and at the bottom, the header and footer, they stay the same because it's basically the page that will be swapped out here. It would look a bit cleaner if we would put this in its own React component. And I also added an image here for the logo. There is a dedicated image component in Next.js, which also comes with some optimizations. And we actually get an issue here. In Next.js, if you're linking to a external image like this, where it's hosted on Cloudinary in this case, I need to allow it explicitly by going to my next config folder file here now if i go back the error is gone all right so now this looks a bit cleaner and i styled it a little bit better as well so now we have the following so if i switch between pages that's where the content of that page will go but so if we now take a look at the folder structure we have the app folder where you have special files you deal with routing so technically we could create our components in here but i like to separate it out into its own components folder and typically i also have a library folder for example for utilities and so on so let's actually try fetching some data. So I can go to that posts page. So all of these components are server components by default in Next.js. And one of the things we can do in there, we can fetch data directly like this. Fetch data from some dummy JSON API, and I can parse it as JSON, and I can log it. Let's actually see what we get. If I wanna see the console, I have to open up the terminal because this runs on the server side. So if I open it up now, you can see it has already fetched some data here, some dummy posts. So now we can map over that here in the UL. So here you can see now I have all of these posts. So here I'm getting data from some third party API. However, I can also get data from my own database. So let me actually set up a database here. So I set up a database and I'm using Prisma 
as my ORM to connect to that. I have other videos on that. Prisma offers the studio option so I can see what's in my database. So I added these two posts. Now I want to use that in my Next.js application. You can see I already did that. In a similar way, you, you can just use async await, use my ORM, get the posts and just map over it here. And if we take a look here, we have a link actually for them because this is just their title. If I click on them, I want to see their content. And typically you have a separate page for that. We have slash posts, but now we want something after that. So it should be a folder inside there. And here I'm using square brackets because it's going to be a dynamic value in the URL. And then in there, we will still have page.tsx. Okay, so this page needs to render the individual post content. And so it needs to know what is actually in the URL. So in this case, there is an ID of one in the URL and in a page component, we can hook into that. So we get params as a prop here and then I can grab it from my database and then I can output its content. So if I do that, you can see we have the title of that post and then also the content. So these are all server components and that's why I can fetch data like this. This runs only on the server. That's why I can directly interact with my database here. So when would you need a client component? Well, if you need to hook into browser events, for example. So in that case, if we want to add an upvote button here, I could add it here. So I could try, so I could try to add some button here and then here we want to hook into the click event. So on click, we want to do something. You cannot do this in a server component. There is no click event in a server component. And I could mark this entire component here as a client component. I can do that with use client. If I do that, indeed, you can see the error disappears. But now everything else on the page is affected by that. So typically what you want to do is you want to refactor that specific part into its own component. And here I can have my upvote button component and I can just mark this specific piece that actually needs it to be a client component. And then in here, well, I can do on click, on change, hook into all of these events. And I can also use React hooks like use state. You cannot use React hooks in server components either, right? So here I can just add that component to the page without affecting the rest of the page. This is now working as you would expect. So typically we do want to keep things on the server if it's possible. There are many benefits to that. Fetch data like this. We can keep large dependencies on the servers, doing some heavy computation. It can be done on the server and then the render result of this, that is then sent to the user's browser. So that's why we still see server components. Well, we, at least we see the output, the render result of a server component here in my browser. But the actual computation to make that happen can be done on the server side, right? But with a client component, it runs in the browser. So the logic, the JavaScript code for that needs to be shipped to the client. And that's okay in this case, it's not a huge problem. So this is one Next.js app and you have to think both about the client side as well as the server side. So in the client side, we have client components and on the server side, we have server components. But we have some other things on the server side as well, like server action. So we've already seen how to get data into the app, how to fetch data. But what about the other CRUD operations like creating, updating, deleting? Well, that is what server actions are for, actually, your so-called mutations. So the traditional GET request is basically going to be done mostly in server components. And then to update data, you can you can use so-called server actions. So let's say we want to be able to create posts as well. So on the posts page, we want to have a form. So previously you would have to do something like on submit. However, these days we can use the action attribute. And then here I can specify a function that will run on the server side. I can mark that as use server. And then I can try doing something like this. This looks very strange if you've not seen server actions before. And typically I like to put these functions in their own file as well, because they are quite like important entities in our code. I will create an actions folder here and in there we'll just have one file. So I can create a function called create post and here I will receive the form data. So I do need to specify the name of this function in place here. So I will just specify a name, create post. I need to import it. And now when I fill out the form here, if I say third, now, if I click on create post, it will be sent here as the form data. So here I can grab the title and the content and actually insert it in my database, all without manually setting up some kind of API endpoint like you would have done in the past. If I refresh here, you can see we have a new post in a database. If I refresh, you can see indeed we have our third post here. Now it's a bit annoying to refresh. In fact, we want this page to be updated when we add a post. We can do revalidate path, fifth post, number five. Now if I submit this, I didn't even refresh 
but you can see I now also get this fifth post here. Here we are creating a post, but you can imagine it would be very similar for editing a post or deleting a post. There are so-called route handlers, so we can still create API endpoints on our server. It's very similar as creating an actual page. So in this case, it would be slash API. So I create folder API and it would be titles and then not a page, but it's going to be a route.ts. So when somebody makes a request to our server with that route, get all the titles and we will return that as JSON data. So now if I go to that route, you can see we have our JSON data here with all of the post titles. In practice, this is commonly used for webhooks. Maybe somebody made a payment and you're using Stripe. Stripe will notify you with a so-called webhook. So you can see between the client side and server side, there is this request response cycle. But what if you want to do something when there is an incoming request to the server side, before you do any of this, you want to have some other logic first. Well, in that case, we may want to have something called middleware. So I can create a middleware.ts file in the root of the source folder and here I can export a function that will get that incoming request and we may want to do something here like redirect the user or internationalization or some people use it for authentication or maybe logging in this case I'm only going to log something to the console and then we are allowing the request to continue I can specify on which routes that should run so let's say on slash post so now if I refresh here you can see we see middleware is running for slash posts now, when we want to go to production, we want to optimize the app as much as possible. There is a build script here as well. So it's going to check the types and then it's also going to generate static pages. So for SEO, it's good if we can already create HTML out of these pages. So now my app is built. If I want to see how it looks like in production, I can use the other script called start. So in that case, it will be npm run start. Okay, so now I have these pages. It should actually feel faster. Now about SEO and static rendering. So for example, this page here slash post, we can already generate HTML for this page during this build. And we can see that slash posts is indeed a static page. It has been pre-rendered. And the same is true for the home page. But then we also have this individual post page that, with the ID. In that case, when somebody goes here, this HTML of this page is not ready to go. It needs to be computed on demand, which is going to take a little bit longer. The user will have to wait a little bit before that's finished. and. Also, it has to be done for every new user coming as well. So it's very inefficient. In this case, we can specify to Next.js, hey, for these particular params, please generate a page out of it with generate static params. This is more of an advanced feature. So, so now we have a Next.js application and now we want to make it available to the rest of the world on the internet. So we need to deploy Next.js. We need to host it somewhere so other people can access it as well. So let me actually show you how to self-host Next.js with Coolify on a VPS. I'm going to use Hostinger for that they are also today's sponsor and one of the reasons i like them is that they already offer a coolify vps template out of the box so i think that's a major plus for hosting her if i scroll down a little bit here to the plans i'm going to use the kvm2 plan i had a group I had a great time using this actually so far. These are the resources that we get with that. If you anticipate that you're going to need more of that, you may want to go for a bigger plan here. However, I will just go with the KVM2 plan. You can find a link in the description, by the way, if you want to sign up. If I choose this plan right now, when you pay for this, make sure to use my coupon code, which is all uppercase byte grad to get a discount. And so you can get a great price here for your VPS. Then if we scroll down a little bit here, you can pick a location, but here we can pick the operating system. So here is where I'm going to use Coolify because they make self-hosting actually so much easier and I will pay. All right, so after payment, there is a setup wizard here. So let me walk you through it here. You need to set up a password here that you may need to use to access the VPS, although we don't need to use it with just Coolify, but it's still good to remember this so make sure you pick one that you remember i will finish the setup here all right so then it's gonna set up my vps so i will get back to you when it's finished all right so now my vps is finished we can go to manage vps here and here is the hosting or dashboard so we can manage all sorts of settings about our VPS. But since we picked the Coolify template, we can actually just go to that panel right here. And so here we can set up our Coolify account. So here in Coolify, it's organized in so-called projects. We can have a private repo on GitHub here for our Next.js app and then uh, link that here with Coolify. So let's actually make sure that we push our app to GitHub first. Since we're not gonna use a database in this example, I will remove my database here. All right, so I will just call this 
my blog. I'm gonna make it private and I will create the repo here. So I will first stage all of the changes, just paste all of this in one go. My app is here on GitHub, okay? So now I can combine that here with Fullify so I can do private repo here. We're going to add a GitHub app. So we need to register here, but we do have to create a GitHub app here, okay? And I need to install the repos. I will pick the my blog, okay? install all right so then we have the github app um, let me actually just save here now i can go back to projects here my project and now we can actually add a resource it's going to be a private repo we can pick the github app that is relevant for that so let's create the application here and we click on deploy so we just have to wait a couple of seconds and at some point it will be finished so actually if we go to the configuration of that deployment a domain has been created for us as well if i go there you can see that we now have our next.js application running on the vps all managed here with coolify coolify is running on our vps here hosted by hostinger if you have a domain we can also set that up so actually hostinger also offers domains i have a domain here i can add an a record so i can see that right here i can specify it like this and update the record now i can go here to coolify i can go back to my configuration here and here under domains i can now use that one with https so it's going to be bytegradcourses.com i'll press enter here but it does need to redeploy as you can see right so here if i want to redeploy the app it's just one button click boom all right so when that is finished i can copy that i can go to my actual domain that i want to use and here we go here is my application and it's using https so now i have a very smooth deployment process here for self-hosting this was this was much more difficult before but yeah thanks to uh coolify and also of course hosting her with their coolify templates this is actually a very smooth experience so i would say check out hosting her with the coolify template i will link it down below so i hope you have a better idea now of next.js this was a very quick video a lot of other videos if you want more in-depth content in any case thanks to hosting her for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching i hope to see you in the next one bye